Good morning, folks. As the sun went down on the United States yesterday, the Russians were getting ready to launch an unmanned rocket from Kazakhstan. It was carrying a few satellites, some other equipment. But shortly after launch, problems began to occur. Guys, tell me this isn't reminiscent of the post-launch aerials we saw Challenger pull before exploding. The fire spread up the rocket within moments, the structure began disintegrating, and finally, a fireball of metal crashed to the ground creating an enormous explosion. Now, a word on catastrophe. Most have heard of the 19 firefighters lost two nights ago. May they now rest. This is the Veer's image of that deadly blaze as seen from space. Here's the forecasted drought outlook, the drought look as I call it, showing expected rain mitigation or exacerbation between now and September 30th. This appears to be more of the same we've seen. Dalila, south of the Mexican coastline, has officially turned west and is headed out to sea. Previous storm cells have made their way to Norway, Sweden, and Finland here, while the next one crests France, Germany, and Italy and begins feeding off Mediterranean moisture. Per yesterday's forecast, the rockier weather down here, all moving to New Zealand. The west coast is a swirling mass of entropy after losing the larger South Alaskan low-pressure cell. We prefer it that way. Meanwhile, the eastern convergence could be dicey this evening. Dropped a tornado in New England last night. Check the wind map and the pressure cells. Moving to the sun, Superstar emerges from the southeastern limb, immediately dwarfing all Earth-facing active regions, appears magnetically ready to fire whenever. I currently have three Delta prospects in this group. For advanced watchers, how many do you see? Anyway, we are still awaiting her first pop, or are we? I'll come back to that. Solar wind has been of the calming nature. Speed is waning as yesterday's CME was almost of no influence whatsoever. The slight rise in density is just that, slight. We do have coronal holes facing Earth today, on the north and on the south. Umbral Field really wanted to block that opening completely, but we did catch the left sliver between the blue lines and took our first six-pointer in days. Only the second one in two weeks. Just had a 5.6 hit Tonga as well, so Southwest Pacific watch is now elevated. The 6.1 we did take in Indonesia was all over the charts. Human readings as high as 6.3 with a computer sensor measuring 6.5. Now back to the sun. Our leftover question from a few scenes ago, did we get our first pop yet? Well, no. A massive eruption did leave that left side, the eastern limb, just as the sunspots crest. But it was the megafilament on the northeastern limb that Brody Love accurately identified yesterday in the comments section, leaving the sun. Helio Viewer is not updating, so the STO page downloads and the Proba swap are what we got. Let's flip sideways here. Also worth mentioning. Yet another major CME edited by NASA. You can call me crazy if you want, but you can't deny that every such CME is censored on the LASCO images. The explanation given to me was that they are subject to the Homeland Security export controls, which means they're either hiding aliens, which I doubt, or the electrical nature of CMEs, which would drop the glass on free energy, interstellar travel, superweapons, and the nature of our universe. You can see why it's censored like the hundreds of others I've shown you for the last two years. Last notes. NASA tracking a squirrel fart of a CME headed our way, no concern at all, and adding to yesterday's conjunctions is a heliocentric opposition of Mercury and Jupiter coming July 4th. Eyes open. No fear at 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.